So they just dropped the trailer for the second part of the Ruby Justice League crossover. This is the second half of a crossover event from Rooster Teeth's Ruby and the Justice League, which are both owned by Warner Brothers, and they're going to get whatever they can out of their IPs. I reviewed part one on this channel, so you can check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Link will be in the card. Also, I'm going to be going over a lot of spoilers for part one, so if you're interested in the film, I would recommend watching it first and then coming back here. Part one involved the Justice League characters seemingly going to Ruby's world. I say seemingly because the big twist is that they're actually in a simulation, created by Kilgore and a mysterious partner of his. This partner's identity is never revealed, but there's speculation that it's either Arthur Watts, since this seems to be taking place before he died, or Dr. Merlot, the main antagonist from the video game Grim Eclipse. It looks like he'll finally be revealed in this movie, which I think is pretty cool since the first one was really lacking that villainous team-up. After all, one of the main appeals of crossovers is characters interacting with each other, including villainous team-ups. Personally, my money's on Merlot, since the trailers specify that the Grimm have been altered specifically to counter our heroes, and Merlot was known for experimenting on the Grimm. It seems like they're in a simulation again though, so maybe they haven't quite escaped, or they found themselves in another simulation. Either way, they decide to reach out to Team Ruby. No mention of Jean, Ren, or Nora though, which is a little disappointing. Maybe they're saving them for a reveal? Jean and Jessica were easily the best part of the previous film, and it'd be great to see a reunion between the two. It did show the reunion between Ruby and Clark, which was pretty cute. And now that all these characters have a history, it'd be interesting to see how they interact with each other, like Weiss and Batman reuniting. And if they do bring in Jean, Ren, and Nora, it'd be interesting to see them hang out together without it being awkward for Ren and Nora with Cyborg. Since in the previous film, they had this love triangle thing going on, and it would also be cool to see the Ruby gang learn about the DC universe and explore this new world and their new abilities. Maybe the Justice League will give them a tour. It shows the girls in their normal outfits and a DC makeover, Although the trailer doesn't give us a good look at Weiss, which is a little weird, we got a decent look at everyone else's designs, and seeing redesigns of how the characters would look in the DC universe is a major part of the appeal of these crossovers, just like seeing the Justice League's redesigns from when they were in Remnant. I did like the designs that we did see. I think they utilized their base color really well, although I am confused by Blake's redesign. First of all, her cat ears are missing, and she seems to have magic powers. There's a part where she gets these magical dark wings, and it kind of reminds me of Raven's magic from Teen Titans, which doesn't really have anything to do with Blake. She's more like a ninja cat girl, and I'm not really seeing that here. I do like the design overall. It does give off a ninja vibe, which makes sense for a character. I just wonder how they're going to justify the powers they gave her. I like Yang's look a lot too. She definitely gives off Amazonian warrior vibes, which totally works for Yang. And I like Ruby's look too. These aren't the same costumes that they had in the comic tie-in, which seems to be a separate continuity, which is a little confusing but I reviewed the first issue on this channel if you want to check that out. It'll be linked in the card, but I think the costumes there were kind of understated. Ruby didn't have much red outside of her scarf, and Weiss's outfit looked a lot like her regular outfit, just with some extra detail, so I think these work well. With what we do see of Weiss, she looks pretty cute. She has her hair down and is wearing a combat skirt. Admittedly, I don't feel like this is very comic book style, but I think it works well for Weiss, and I'm looking forward to eventually seeing a close-up of it. Then there's, of course, the Justice League. Black Canary is joining the cast this time around, which is pretty cool. I'm also pretty excited to see Barry actually be a part of the cast, since in the first movie he was possessed the entire time by Kilgore, so he didn't really get to interact with anybody. Kilgore is kind of an obscure Flash villain, so there's a running joke how no one was really taking him seriously, and they weren't expecting it to be him at all, which is still going on in this film. Kilgore. <laughs> really? Really? and he's taking it pretty personally, which is awkward because he took over Flash's body and heard everything they said about him. He was actually doing a decent job at covering his tracks, literally hiding in plain sight, and he got away with it for most of the movie. Although it was pretty funny that Kilgore was roasting all their names. You have a teammate named Batman. Now is that better or worse than a teammate named Superman? Right? Even though he has no room to talk, he literally spells his name with a percentage sign. But anyway, I'm excited to see how Barry will fit in with them. I was kind of expecting this movie to be in 2D since the previous one was in 3D and they were in Remnant, but Justice League is usually in 2D. But I think the team behind Ruby handled these films, so 3D it is. I do think the Justice League looks pretty good though, although something's off about Wonder Woman. I think her head is probably too small for her body, 
already, which is kind of throwing me off, so that's kind of unfortunate. I'm curious how they'll handle this large cast again, especially if they do end up bringing in Jean, Nora, and Ren, and sometimes it can be hard to juggle all the characters within one movie. In the last movie, they split the cast up, and most of them ended up going into the woods, and it was just a lot of characters to keep track of and for them to try to find something to do, and I'm worried that it might end up feeling crowded again, especially since this film probably won't have a lot of setup given that most of that came in the first film. I have felt that certain season and Ruby proper ended up having a crowded cast, and that detracted from the overall story in my opinion, so seeing such a large cast makes me a little nervous. Hopefully they'll be able to find a good balance for all of them. The main conflict is probably going to be dealing with these Grimm, which seem to have powers now and specific powers to counteract the Justice League, like one of them seems to have a large amount of kryptonite fused with its body, which is very concerning, but I wonder what other kind of side quests they'll give the characters to deal with, and of course there's the anticipated villain team up, so I'm hoping there's going to be an epic fight there, but I also hope we get some strong character moments like we did in the first film with John and Jessica. This is also probably the last time we'll be able to see those two interact with each other, unless they come up again in more comics, but again those seem to be a different continuity, at least Pierre is alive in the first comic timeline. I miss her. Anyway, I'm overall excited to see where this movie goes. These have been pretty fun crossovers. It'd be kind of funny if Remnant was actually canon to the DC universe, and then they could bring it into the multiverse in the movies, but that's just my crazy headcanon. The trailer doesn't specify a release date, however Warner Brothers has announced that it's scheduled for Halloween this year, which fun fact is Ruby's birthday, so that's cool. So we'll see what's in store. So those are my thoughts on the trailer for the upcoming Justice League and Ruby Part 2. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Did you enjoy Part 1 and are you excited for Part 2? Let me know in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching everyone, I really appreciate it. Before I go, I have a couple shoutouts I want to give. First is at Ragnarok Knight on Twitter slash X. For this awesome piece of fan art inspired by Three Kingdoms China, I love the warrior look. It's really awesome. Thank you so much. The next piece of fan art comes from at HorseheadV2 on Twitter or X. I'm never gonna get used to that, but thanks for the cool beach look, it's a lot of fun, and thank you all for watching this video. I'd like to give a shout out to our members before I go. Stutania, Tyrant Carnivore, Shiny Orc Boy, The Rabbit Mancer, General Bolivar, Depth Charge Media, Samaru163, Gabby Hime, Verdant Range, JVR, Hussyman42, Nixel, Phil C, Taylor Ramirez, Caleb Nelson, Dakari the Professor, Equestron, Norman Sweetcream, Way Beyond Coincidence, Garcia XV Legend, Hunter Rose, 80s Nostalgia Guy, Felix Bam, Soundboy00, Zero Zero, Owen Wildish, Player Zero, Kitsune Fiora, Lucas Geist, Data Dine Executive, Jay Draws, Blue Spirit, Bandito Bane, Lil, Meowzers, Sky, Jin KZ, Philip, and Ninja Rex. Thank you all so much for your support, we really appreciate it. If you'd like to become a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button, and if you enjoyed this video, and like our content, you can leave a like on the video and subscribe, and that part's free. We also have Buy Me Coffee if you want to support us that way. Thanks again for watching everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.